A while back we started a mini series where I was going to go through every year from the year 2000 all the way up to present and go over the best FPS games and we kind of got away from that but I'm going to bring it back so if you want this to continue drop a like on this video show your support to it and you guys let me know. So we are going to continue our best of the year series with Quake Four. Now, 2005 was a very interesting year for shooters due to the fact that this was the last year of the sixth console generation. So, a lot of developers didn't want to put too much into their games since the new systems were right around the corner, but there were still some huge standouts just like every year. And Quake 4 launched in October of 2005 for the PC and the Xbox 360. It was actually one of the 360's launch titles. Unlike previous games in the series, this one was actually developed by Raven Software. Yes, same Raven Software that worked on Call of Duty, and it had a heavier emphasis on the single player campaign rather than just the multiplayer, like some of the recent Quake offerings. Now, the multiplayer was criticized a bit for basically being a rehash of Quake 3, but the campaign was praised for its visuals. It had really good level design, and it had very good production quality. However, a lot of the longtime fans they didn't like it, including the original director of the series, John Romero, who did an interview in 2016 talking about how disappointed he was in Quake 4. Regardless, it was still a fun game, and if you don't compare it to the previous Quake games, it was one of the best shooters of 2005. Here's a game that most of you have probably never heard of. Project Snowblind. It was developed by Crystal Dynamics and it was released in early 2005 for the PS2, PC, and the OG Xbox. Now, it was a pretty interesting game. You controlled an enhanced soldier going against an evil regime and there was a lot of emphasis on using your environment to your advantage. You could hack enemy tech, be sneaky with stuff. Reportedly, the game was going to be part of a different franchise, but eventually it turned into its own thing, which allowed the devs more creative freedom with the universe and the gameplay options. It got good reviews, and despite the campaign being pretty short, it was super fun and very replayable thanks to the unique gameplay. If you can go hunt down a copy of Snowblind, give it a go. I mean, seriously, it, it didn't get a lot of attention when it was released, but it's a fun game. This next series used to be one of the main tactical shooters on the market, but after the launch of the seventh console generation, it just disappeared. I'm talking about SWAT, specifically SWAT 4. It was developed by Irrational Games, and it had you controlling a SWAT agent in various missions set in a fictional city based on New York City. Everything was extremely detailed. It forced you to be really careful with your movement and shots so you could save as many civilians as possible while taking out the perp cleanly. The game... It was designed to be a simulation of the real world SWAT forces, and it actually did pretty good. It encouraged players to use lethal force only when absolutely necessary, and it forced you to make snap decisions and scoring you based on how well you stuck to the mission. SWAT 4 also featured a very detailed multiplayer with some very unconventional modes, both cooperative and competitive. The game got good reviews. It was one of the best-selling PC games of its time, and there hasn't been a SWAT release in years, and at this point, it's probably not going to happen. There is a spiritual successor though. It is being developed and it's called Ready or Not. It's supposed to release at the end of 2020, so we'll see. At number seven, we have Condemned Criminal Origins, one of the best horror games of its time. This is a first person survival horror game that launched in late 2005 for the 360 and then the next year it came over to PC. Now, it's not really a first person shooter since most of the combat is melee focused, but I put it here anyway since it's a first person game and you can use guns. You played as an investigator named Ethan Thomas who is following a series of murders in pursuit of a serial killer. But the further you go, the deeper you dive, the more you start to realize things aren't as simple as they seem and you have to fight off an army of civilians who have been driven insane for unknown reasons. It is a great horror game and a great mystery, but what really makes the game stand out is the combat. You're mainly playing in a very tight enclosed environment. While you're only fighting one enemy most of the time, the stakes are super high since you can die extremely quickly if you're not on your toes. Condemned Criminal Origins is a criminally underrated horror game and I cannot recommend it enough. Who remembers the Time Splitters franchise? I personally would love to see this come back, but it's probably not happening. But at number six, Time Splitters, Future Perfect. The third title to release in the series, and it would be the last. Developed by Free Radical Design and released for the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox in early 2005, Future Perfect had you playing as a time-traveling Marine, trying to travel to the past to save the future by stopping the creation of an eagle organization. Now, like other games in the series, 
Future Perfect got really good reviews thanks to its original gameplay and good writing, but it didn't do so well and it ended up being the last game in the series to ever be released. And hopefully one day we get a revival, but I'm not going to hold my breath, especially since the game's main designers have stated in interviews that they don't think the series would be able to survive in today's gaming market. Cracking into the top five today, Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. Now, Brothers in Arms used to be one of the main names in military FPS games. Road to Hill 30 was the first and also arguably the best game in the series. It was released in 2005 for the Xbox, the PS2, and the PC. This story had you fighting in the Second World War as part of the 101st Airborne Division during Mission Albany, and the progression of the story was based on specific real-world events and battles. The developer's Gearbox software, yep, same Gearbox software you know, also wanted the game to feel more realistic rather than like an action movie. So they gave you more control over your squad and the handling of weapons was more unpredictable and difficult. It forced you to really be thoughtful with your shots since you never knew when your gun was going to start fighting against you. As many of the firearms used in Second World War, they were notoriously unreliable. The game was praised for its atmosphere, its storytelling, and the gameplay. And it ended up actually selling 1.7 million copies in its first month, which is extremely impressive for a brand new IP. And it gave birth to a somewhat short-lived franchise. Next up is Star Wars Republic Commando, one of the best Star Wars games ever made. Launched and developed by LucasArts, released for the PC and the original Xbox, you played as an elite group of clone troopers during the beginning of the Clone Wars. You carried out special operations and you learned more about the universe during that era. The gameplay was a blend of tactical squad-based combat and straightforward running and gunning, and the story, the story was great. The multiplayer was fun too, but unfortunately it didn't perform too well since this was also when Halo 2 was dominating the multiplayer charts and many wrote Republic Commando off as an imitator. But it was praised by critics. It was great. I mean, the writing, the gameplay, fans loved it for how it treated the Clone Wars era of Star Wars. It was unfortunately a disappointment in the sales department and the planned sequel was axed. But thankfully, you can still get this game on Steam and it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. So if you never got to play this, you need to. Battlefield 2. The first Battlefield game was a massive success, which obviously prompted DICE to go ahead with the sequel. Second game, BF2, decided to ditch the World War II setting and go for modern day portrayal, and it had a fictional conflict between the US, China, Russia, Europe, and a made-up Middle Eastern faction during the early 21st century. The gameplay took the large-scale battles of the first, but they spiced them up with more dynamic gameplay and even some more tactical elements, and it was surprisingly well-balanced for a game of its size. It was a huge success, and one of the biggest PC games of that year thanks to its addicting combat, unique size, and the scale. It gave you an experience that you couldn't get anywhere else, which is something the Battlefield series has always prided itself on, even if BF5 was a bit underwhelming. At number two, one of the most beloved games of all time, Battlefront 2, released on Halloween of 2005. The PS2, the Xbox, and the PC got graced with this game, and after a less, it was, it was only like, I think, a year of development by Pandemic Studios. Like the first game, Battlefront 2 had you partaking in various battles throughout the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy of Star Wars as well, as some additional battles that weren't in the movies. It gave you the power to rewrite history and get into the thick of things in a way that no other game allowed you to do. BF2 also included the fan favorite Galactic Conquest mode, which was a huge game of risk as you faced off with another player in hot competition for control of the entire galaxy. You could take over one planet at a time, you could take over all of it. It was a huge success and still one of the best selling and most beloved Star Wars games of all time. And unfortunately, EA soiled the Battlefront license with their rebooted series, but Hopefully, they come to their senses soon and just remaster the classic games with their modern engine. How cool would that be? Getting to play the original Battlefront 2 again, but on DICE's Frostbite engine. That would be a lock for Game of the Year. And at number one for the year 2005, Call of Duty 2. Developed by Infinity Ward, released by Activision for the PC and the 360, it blew up. Now, the first COD was a pretty decent success, but COD 2 was the moment where people knew this was going to be a series to keep an eye on. It improved on every aspect of the original and introduced many gameplay elements that are still in the series today, such as regenerating health. The story? It was told well. The sound design was good. The level design was super fun and replayable, and the multiplayer laid the groundwork and foundation for the future of the series. COD 2 was one of the biggest games of the year, and it ended up selling over a quarter million copies in its first week on the Xbox 360 alone. 
Maybe one day we'll get a remaster of this classic game, but I doubt it. You can still play COD 2 on PC or Xbox One through backwards compatibility, so if you are a COD fan and you want to know more about the franchise's roots or you just want a really good World War II shooter, go download COD 2 and let me know what you think about it on Twitter. And there you have it, my friends. Those are my 10 picks for the best FPS titles of the year 2005. Next up would be 2006. You guys let me know if you want to see it. There's another video up on the screen right now. Go check that one out. I will see you in the comment section of that video.